you had the alliance on you. Criminals and savages. Half the people on the ship have been shot or wounded, including yourself, and you're harboring known fugitives. We're still flying. That's not much. It's enough. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Nexicon episode one. Yay! <laughs> I'm Michael Gaines. I'm Casey Coughlin. You're the Casey Coughlin straight out of Comic Con, San I Diego Comic Con. Wearing my professional badge. Yay! I, I don't have. I have my New York Comic Con. I didn't go. <laughs> no, I was it's okay. To go ahead, it's but. it's a long long trek for you. Yes, it is. But uh, you had a lot of fun. Now, should we explain to people what the hell this is about? Uh, Comic Con or the <laughs> next the Nexicon. Um, it's pretty much about all things geeky and nerdy and, and yeah, movies, TV shows, music, books, and, uh, and video why, games. All why should the, people listen to us? Because we're because we're pretty big nerds. I don't know no, because this no. is our life and um. Well, that wasn't the answer I was looking for. It's because you yeah. and I are. Begins with awesome. an A. Awesome. And we're going to rule this, aren't we? <laughs> yes. So, uh, out of we, we've been working on this for, what, five months? <laughs> I, think. I don't yeah. know if we've been working on this for five time. months. We were going to launch it, and then we were going to launch it, and then we are going to launch it. And, it was, and, then, and then you said it on Friday, Friday, I think, oh, let's just do it on Monday. Yeah. I and mean, today's Tuesday. We had a little scheduling conflict yesterday, so we're doing it today. And um, we, we want to, I just, well, I should just say one thing is that uh, Casey and I were doing the quest log, which is about gaming. Yes. And we're also doing the Infinite Loop show, which is about, yes, which is Max. Use Max. And I had said, this may be too much, three shows for the two of us to do crammed into a week, every week. And I said, mm -hmm. well, maybe what we may do is roll the quest log into this show. The gaming part into this show and then we, we, we said let's see how it goes and you came to me last week and you said you know what that might not be a bad idea <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i mean you do a a crap ton of shows during the week i am a lesser mortal who cannot keep up <laughs> lesser mortal with so so many shows so um i mean i i want to do all the shows but you know my my time is not as much as I'd like it to be. Mm -hmm. Well, the difference is I work from home and you don't. Yeah, that's, so, it's quite the restriction. So yeah. I can't move stuff around as easily. Yeah, that's true. So um, we're just saying that so that the gaming part of the show will be in here. Although for this particular episode, we're going to focus a lot on Comic-Con. It's kind of a big deal. And there's kind of a lot of news <laughs> that came out of Comic-Con. I don't know if anybody's been paying attention to the end internets um but yeah there was a ton of crap and so that's going to be the majority of the, the show internets all of yeah. the internets all, yeah no you can't just pay attention to one part <laughs> you have to watch all the internets all of them all right so why don't you start because you went so t yeah, tell us your your tale of woe and fun oh, and i know <sighs> okay so i haven't been in a couple of years i I've been a religious, pretty much Comic-Con goer, and I love Comic-Con. I've been going since 97. Mm -hmm. um, I was, you know, much, much younger, and it, the con was incredibly different back then. Um, it still is, to date, I believe, the biggest comic convention in the world. Oh, sure. Um, goes once a year in San Diego at the convention center, um, in case you don't know. Uh, <laughs> Back then, you could walk up on site and buy passes for 15 bucks. And I sound like an old crotchety man when I say this. <laughs> 15 bucks. And then we walked uphill on the escalator both ways, barefoot, you know, and all that. But, I mean, you could literally walk up, buy passes that day. And, you know, it, 
it was like that. I mean, it was still a big con, but it wasn't nearly as big as it is. Even when I went two years ago, it feels like it's blown up twofold since then. Mm -hmm. This year was insane. And really, it makes me wonder if San Diego as a city isn't (laughs) big enough to hold the con anymore. Oh, no. It literally has taken over all of San Diego. The Mm. minute from the minute you drive in to San Diego County, not even the city, but the county, you feel it in traffic. Mm -hmm. You know there's something going on. This is not normal. And as soon as you hit the city, it is it's bigger than any kind of fair. When the fairgrounds, you know, have the the Del Mar Fair, I mean that's kind of like a big deal too, but this is huge. Mm -hmm. Every restaurant, every store, every everyone within the um main part of downtown, the gas lamp district. It's insane. And everybody is catering to the con. Everyone's dressed up, you know, waiter waiters, waitresses, stores, they have sales, you know, they have their signage is all catering to the con. It's it's a citywide, you know, phenomenon. But I mean, because there's literally just so many people. And that's just outside the con. Mm-hmm. Um once you get into the con, into the convention center, it it's even worse. I mean, and worse in a good way, obviously. There's just so many people. And also it seems like who is actually exhibiting in the con, it has changed as well. There's mm-hmm. a lot more, more studios and big production companies and like the biggest ten years ago, we'll say the biggest companies that had, you know, the big budget booths that you walk in and you know, they're not really booths as much as experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, the only companies that really had those were DC, Marvel, Image. That was it. Yeah. Now you've got um, Cartoon Network, you've got Mattel, you've got Bandai, which, you know, should be there. Um, Sony, PlayStation. Um, Microsoft G- there? For, uh, no, no, they're not. And um, just a lot of, you know, huge, like pretty much every TV channel, Fox, um, CW, uh, ABC, um, MTV, a lot of channels, a lot of movie studios, they all have their huge, like, experience booths. And so that's the majority. There's hardly any booths that have just, like boxes of back issues Mm -hmm. or bookshelves of graphic novels and the artist alley, which used to be a bunch of tables of kind of lower end indie artists who, you know, couldn't afford a booth. They just have a table for signings Mm -hmm. that shrunk. I think at least in half, if not by into a shrunk, I thought it would have gotten bigger. No, it's, it's actually like this teeny tiny, literally like an alley in the back, far back of the con. Wow, because uh, at New York Comic Con, they had an entire hall at Javits. Yeah, they it used to be, well, they'd be on the, the main show floor, mm-hmm. but they had, because the show floor is kind of broken up into, into like little aisles. Mm-hmm. They used to have like 10 aisles, I want to say at least eight or 10 aisles for Artist Alley, but now it's like two or three. Oh, weird, because the way that Javits is set up is that you've got... Um, Hall areas in in the lower section. The main area is two giant halls, and one hall is for exhibitors, and then they had an entire hall. Um, well, was it or maybe it was three? If I remember how Javits is set up, but they had an entire hall just for Artist Alley, and it was huge. And there were just so many artists, and um, I'm surprised that that San Diego's would have shrunken, whereas New York's seems to have gotten bigger. I think that's probably the saddest part. I mean, I I think a lot of people still go there to, you know, scrounge through back issue boxes and try and find that one book or novel that they've been looking for. But a lot of people go to see the artists and writers they love, too. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of sad if, if that's been put on the back burner, uh, so to speak. It's become more about debuting your new trailer for whatever. Your yeah, new game trailer, yeah. move trailer, uh, you know, footage of your new TV show. Um, another thing that's really kind of changed and blew my mind this year 
was trying to get into panels. Mm-hmm. Now, aside from the show, the show floor has always just been one aspect of the con. Then they have a myriad of panels where, you know, these artists and writers and, and actors and uh, voice actors and just everybody from everything come and they, you know, discuss anything from like how to break into the industry to, you know, what's coming up in next season or a movie or whatever. Um, so all the big shows are there. Mm-hmm. Um, movie studios are there and they, you know, put out trailers and footage of their upcoming projects. And then, you know, like writers and artists are there describing like what they were thinking when they did such and such story arc or what they got coming up next or even just how to panels. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one hall, Hall H, that it <laughs> hall H for hell. is um, it's the biggest hall there. It seats about 6,500 people. And so the big, big, big budget panels are always in that hall. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, your Marvel studios for movie debuts and stuff like that. Um, Kevin Smith on Saturday night has been a staple for as long as I can remember. He's been doing Hall H on Saturday night. That's like a, a staple of the con for over 10 years. Mm-hmm. And that was another thing, like when I was younger and going, I remember just being able to walk in there and sit down. <laughs> like at the time, you know, it starts at seven, you walk in at seven, you got a seat. Um, that's not even remotely the case anymore because, well, A, there's more people. B, these things have become more, I think, mainstream. Mm-hmm. And so like you got Twilight was in Hall H. And oh, but didn't they do that on like the first panel day that one con- to get all the Twilight people out? Yeah. Uh, well, that I don't know what they're thinking, but th- that might have been the case. Uh, um, people this year camped out over 24 hours to get into uh, Hall H. Sure. And likewise, for certain panels in Ballroom Money, which is the next biggest, holding about 2,400 uh, people. But... Um, so, like, the Firefly reunion panel. That was in Ballroom <laughs> 20. And people camped out over the panel was like at noon on friday and people camped out from when the con closed on thursday night they lined up camped out and then got in because they don't empty out the panels Mm -hmm. after each panel Mm -hmm. you can sit in there and so if you can get in to the hall in the morning and just stay in there through all the panels then you'll be you know for say that kevin smith panel at seven at night Hmm. Um, that means you got to, you know, take turns with your buddies doing bathroom breaks or getting food or whatever. But, um, <laughs> well, Star Trek conventions were no different. We used to line up early in the morning and I can't imagine. Ugh, it just, it blew my mind when I <laughs> learned, like, not only am I not going to get in like three panels before I apparently I needed to camp out all night for this. Yeah. Like I didn't know they were handing out iPhones. I mean, this is insane. <laughs> Uh, all right. So let's talk a bit about the news. There, you you have actually a lot of stuff in, in our show notes here. My God, all this news coming out. Um, okay, so I'm just kind of really kind of run through this quickly. Yeah. Um, and I have it broken up into categories. Um, as far as the movies go, mm-hmm. there's some the obvious ones that are coming out soon. Dark Knight Rises this oh my Friday. God, I can't wait. Um, Did you know that yeah. movie is three hours long? The the previous two were pretty long, so I'm not surprised. Oh, I'm not. I'm not complaining. I, I actually, if a movie is really good, I'll sit yeah. for three hours. And it's yeah, like two hours forty seven minutes or something. But they, uh, yeah, they go that long. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, you're closing a big trilogy, and I'm hoping that it has a a, a big ending. And um, one of the things that I've been hearing about this film is that the people that are giving it negative reviews, the press that have been giving it negative reviews, are getting death threats. Whoa! Yeah, it just started happening about an hour before we started recording. I started seeing all this news about how the the negative reviewers are getting death threats over this, and it's, it's okay. ridiculous. Bruce Wayne and Bane are not getting married, people. It's okay. <laughs> uh, there are some rabid Batman fans out there, and this Apparently. this is one. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it right out here. I've said it before. I was not a big fan of the Tim Burton films, uh, the Tim Burton Batman films. Um, mm-hmm. 
I only because I, I just have a lot of problems with the way the, the art style was great, but I have a lot of problems with the way that it was written. It was it was edited. I like the first one, the Michael Keaton one, uh, and Jack Nicholson. I like that one, but the rest are they got progressively yeah. sillier. I think anybody could agree. But the Dark Knight series now is is almost well, if not almost, but it is Very true to film. It's the, it's the movie that I wanted the the eighty nine Burton movie to be. Uh, yeah, and so that's why I was really happy with this. And um, I know you don't have it listed here, so I guess I'm, I might as well bring it up with Dark Knight Rises. Um, I saw the DC panel, and they showed the trailer, the teaser, I should say, um, the teaser for Superman: Man of Steel. And Man of Steel. I next. Sir. Yeah, I found a copy of it on the internet because YouTube kept getting rid of it and getting Pulling rid of it. it, out. it. Yeah. And so I found one just before it got pulled, and wow. I mean, I was really blown away by what they did with this movie, and I'm hoping that, look, it, it, Superman doesn't have to be a happy, happy movie. This is going no. to be probably a darker film. That's fine. So long as it tells a good story in a good way, then I'll be mm. really happy with it. And it looks like yeah. they're doing that. And so... It seems like they've been doing it more with all the superhero movies like X-Men First Class was a little bit darker it than was. the first X-Men. Mm -hmm. uh, this new Amazing Spider-Man was darker than the first mm -hmm. ones. Um, you know, Batman obviously should be darker. Yeah. Uh, um, Superman, you know, it, it seems like they're kind of going that way. Yeah. Did you see the Pee Wee Herman voiceover for the Batman Return or the Dark Knight Rises teaser? I didn't. The commercial. <laughs> Just Google it. It's funny. Okay. You got Pee Wee right. Herman doing all the voices in it. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> no, don't, don't. <laughs> um, okay, can. so yeah, Expendables two. Obviously, this August, um, The Hobbit this December, December fourteenth. Um, yeah, the trailer for that that is not being taken down. You can find the Hobbit trailer just oh, about yeah. anywhere, and it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so. Go Google that. Man of Steel, like I said, June uh, 2013. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't see it there. Pacific Rim is a new kind of sci-fi. They really weren't too... Um, didn't talk a lot about this. Mm -hmm. uh, that comes out uh, next July 12th. Uh, Thor, the Dark World, Thor 2, pretty much, uh, next November. Captain mm -hmm. America, the Winter Soldier, uh, next, oh no, April f 2014, so a little bit of a wait there. Wow. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy, this looks pretty exciting, uh, August 2014. Ant-Man, could care less, personally, <laughs> uh, no, no date. And Iron Man 3. Uh, which they are in the middle of production right now. Uh, no release date as of right now, but it can't be too far along out because they're, like I said, in the middle of production. Yeah, that, that would have to be a summer film. I'm surprised that there was no Star Trek news during Comic-Con because it's only a year. It's less than right? a year no, out. That, I looked because I, when I was putting this list together, I thought the same thing. Like, I thought they were in the middle of production or, you know, it, or ended production or, I mean, this should be coming out soon, the, yeah. the second Star Trek film, but there was absolutely no updates, no news for that anywhere. Nothing. So I don't know, maybe they've hit a hiccup or something. There was another movie that I saw mentioned uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday, which, um, which was not promoted very much during Comic-Con. Uh, the reason why I caught my eye is because I saw an interview with Jodie Foster and somebody had said to her, so what do you think about doing another science fiction film? And I went, what? Because I'm a huge Contact fan. I love that movie to death. And so um, it turns out they're doing a movie called Elysium, I think is the name of it, Elysium, where... Uh, oh, I think I did see that, but I didn't hear a whole lot about it. Yeah, there, there's this like city in the clouds, like Bespin or something. And... and oh, um, okay. The people that live in the clouds um, are the rich and, and all that, and then all the scumbags live on Earth or something like that. And so Ooh. it's a it's a you know, it's a fight against classes or something like that. That's all I know. I mean, I may be getting the whole thing wrong. Kind of sounds like Hunger Games slash, like, I don't know. That storyline has been maybe it's been done before. You're right. A um, lot. <laughs> I may have the story all convoluted and messy, but that was what I got out of it. So I'll have to take a look at that. So, so that um, seems to be it for movies. 
Yeah, for TV, we got like a lot of animated stuff. Um, Teen Titans Go animated <laughs> series. Beware the Batman, yet another animated uh, Batman flick uh, or series. Uh, Green Lantern animated mm-hmm. series. A Mad, just I guess Mad, not Mad TV, but just Mad. Okay. Based on the Mad Magazine stuff. Um, Young Justice Invasion, Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast is a live action uh, wow. starring, um, what's her face? Kirk from um, Smallville. Oh, oh, oh. Kristen um, Kirk yeah, yeah. from Smallville. She's in that. Um, Elementary, I have no idea what that's supposed to be. Cult. Oh, I know what that idea. is. Elementary huh. is, um, it's a modern day Sherlock Holmes with um, oh. Lucy oh. Liu as... Um, as Watson, oh, who was it? I don't know the person who plays Sherlock Holmes, but I've been seeing commercials mm-hmm. for it on TV. Oh, okay. So that's probably coming up. Oh, because it's coming out this fall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Arrow is a new Green Arrow series from the creators of Supernatural and Smallville. Wow. I actually saw the first pilot episode for this. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Defiance. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, I don't know. Uh, it looks good. I'm not crazy about Green Arrow, really. Yeah, me neither. It, Green Arrow, to me, is like the same character as Batman. His backstory, everything is Batman. Okay, he's a rich kid. His parents die. He goes out to fight for justice and clean up his dirty city mm-hmm. uh, of crime, you know, so that this won't happen again. And... Did I mention he's rich, so he's got a lot of gadgets? <laughs> he has a lot of um, toys. But he's, you know, no superpowers, just a guy with gadgets. I mean, that's Batman, so... Mm. But he's not nearly the detective that Batman is, you know? And it's just like... I don't know. I can't really get into it. Okay. And the the show looks like it's very... It's very cw Oh, me. is it a CW show? Yeah. Oh, no, I'll give it um, six episodes. So, I mean, they've got, like, the superhero aspect, but there's the very much, like, the, oh, we're rich young people going to parties, and we have lots of parties, and oh, we're all no, being attractive no, no, if no. we go to parties. Oh, let's go to another party. You know, where, like, I see that over and over in CW shows where it's just, like, a lot of attractive people at parties, and they're all in clubs, and they're just making sexy faces at each other. Oh. <laughs> you know, um, I, I swear there are some people that just they, they make these TV shows and they just don't understand what it takes to make a good show. Like Terra Nova, did you watch that last year? No. Oh, it was terrible. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then good. Didn't miss anything? <laughs> um, Defiance is an interesting show slash game that is coming out next year. Mm-hmm. They're going to be airing the show in conjunction with the launch of the game. And this is a new real-time, real-world MMO, kind of like the secret world, where events in the game are going to influence events in the show and vice versa. Oh, interesting. So what you do in the game in boss, this is going to be reflected in the TV show. Oh, that's that's actually pretty good. I like that. I I like that. Um, it's it's so hitting this could across either two different be, pieces of media. Right. This could either be really awesome or really bad. I think. Well, no, I think that it has the potential because you can. I've always liked. I've said this doing the uh, the Warcraft show that I do, World of Warcast. Is I always wanted dynamic um, changes in the MMO worlds that you're in. Uh, mm-hmm. When Vanilla WoW and, and EverQuest 1, EverQuest 2, everything was very static. It wasn't until um, Burning Crusade in, in, um, in World of Warcraft, where, and, and it was lame, but you could fight over uh, the town of Hala in Nagrand. And that was okay, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. I wanted something a little bigger than that. And so if, if what you're doing in the game influences what's on television, I would really like to see how that works out. Love yeah, um, yeah, I think it has a lot of potential. And then rounding out uh, the TV category, the following, which again, I don't know what that is, and it doesn't really have a date. So, mm-hmm. and then there were the games. The games were big. Uh, a lot of games, like too almost too many games. Like this is E3's little brother or something. It's bizarre. <laughs> um, Deadpool is getting its own game. Okay. Uh, 
Injustice, which is DC. It looks like a, and it's just beautifully rendered, mm-hmm. um, like a Street Fighter type Tekken fighter game with DC heroes. Oh. But it's not going to be like Marvel versus Capcom cartoony. It is beautiful. Really, I must, I must see it. Um, PlayStation All Stars. <laughs> I'm super excited about this. Is Sony's version of Super, super Smash, Smash Brothers? Brothers yeah. Um, the it looks a lot of fun. A uh, new Super Mario Brothers two, because we needed to redo this apparently. Um, but it looks really, really silly and interesting. Uh, Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon. Uh, Bar- never a big Mar- Luigi's Mansion fan. <laughs> I know, me neither. Marvel Heroes. This is the one I am waiting for no uh release date as of yet unless i totally missed the boat on this um this is a diablo-esque you know style mmo for uh pc and it is in the marvel universe and Mm -hmm. you can actually play as marvel superheroes um it looks fantastic the voice acting sounds amazing i believe they pretty much got patrick stewart in there nice um for professor x which I kind of squealed like a girl uh, about. <laughs> um, Avengers Battle for Earth. This, just like Injustice, looks beautiful. Um, it's kind of like the, um, oh, what are those Marvel uh, games where you kind of build your, build out your team and then go and go around fighting. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Um, um, blanking on it. Yeah. I know what you're um, talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they they had pretty much everybody in the Marvel Universe and you unlock characters and you can just build out a team of four and go, you know, save your city or whatever. Mm-hmm. Avengers, it, it kind of looks like that style of game. Um, but again, super beautiful. The Walking Dead. I think this is probably a game that a lot of Walking Dead fans have been waiting a long time now, for. Is this, um, just, is this just like a first person shooter? Or what is this going to be? They, I could not find a demo of this anywhere. Hmm. Um, I saw lots of ads, lots of posters, but no demos anywhere. So I have no idea on what gameplay is going to be like, if it's going to be a first-person shooter or I don't know. I The first thing I thought of was like Left for Dead. So maybe like that. Um, in any case, Gears of War Judgment. Yay. I'm not into... <laughs> You're not a big Gears of War Gears fan? Of- no, I'm not. You know, it was go good. I got a little tired of it, um, only because I had gone through Unreal, I had gone through Quake, and you know, all the way through Quake Four, and then Gears of War to me was okay. Yeah, I but think they're like, still using the Unreal Engine. I'm pretty sh- sure they're they're still using that engine. Mm. So, um, Resident Evil Six. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a series. Uh, uh, that really needs to just take a break. I, yeah, I mean, I I like these games, but at the same time, you're just like, how long can they keep this going? I stopped playing them a while ago. I don't even know if it's still Raccoon City. I know it's still the Umbrella Corporation because yeah. I see, um, I well, see the, the trailers. Well, they got out of the city. They were like way far out, but um yeah. I, Speaking I, of five, <laughs> Metal Gear Solid Five. Mm-hmm. This is a series I think they could just. I mean, it's it's you know a a plain enough kind of story so that they could just make these forever. Yeah, it it's, to Metal Gear to me is sort of like the James Bond of video games yeah. in such a way yeah. where you you can just do whatever you want with it from game to right, game, right. and Snake, it won't get boring. Just always, you know, exactly. Fine stuff to do and it'll be good uh lost planet three uh, devil may cry devil may cry they're doing another one yeah um they didn't say like what number you know because i think this would be four i think i played the first one and i just uh-huh. went well that was kind of cool and stylish and all and, uh, that was it. yeah i like the style of them like uh, blood rain blood rain to me is like i played blood rain all the way through uh-huh. i thought it was great for its time blood yeah. rain 2 i just went oh this is awful and I, I never finished made the it. mistake of seeing the movie, and oh. I will never look at those games the same. So, <laughs> were they? You know, were they that bad? Yes, God, yes. Okay. Um, uh, I mentioned this in the TV section. Defiance mm-hmm. again. It's going to be kind of a real world, present day MMO. Mm-hmm. 
Um, Transformers, Fall of Cybertron, yay. Mm. Castlevania, Lords of Shadow, that looks pretty fun. It looks a lot like the um, Might and Magic series mm-hmm. kind of style now. Uh, Fortnite, I didn't say a whole lot about this. Assassin's Creed 3 looks amazing because if you've been paying attention at all, it is set during the uh, Revolutionary War. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. awesome. Uh, Planet Side 2. Naruto Shippuden, I don't care. Um, <laughs> Darksiders 2, Sleeping Dogs, I saw everywhere. Hitman Absolution, uh, yeah. that's Square Enix's new thing. I'm so. going to embarrass myself. I'm blanking on the name, but what's that new game coming out where it's um, is it made by... Uh, all right, it's it's the one about like the afterlife or something. You and I got like really excited about it when they announced it at E three. What was the name of that one? Um, it was made by the same people that did Heavy Rain. Oh, um, shoot, I forget yeah, the name. Well, did you see any of? Uh-huh. No, no, it's it's really um, there was no, no news about that one. Um, I know what you're talking about though. That I haven't really seen a lot of news about that period mm-hmm. after E three, you know, and they had that um, that trailer with the um, the AI robot, but I don't I don't think that's going to play into the, the game, mm-hmm. or maybe I'm wrong. It is, um, but I thought that was more of like a demonstration of their new engine and new um, rendering model, and mm-hmm. not really a game demo. Okay, um, yeah, I'm. I'm looking it up now because I'm I'm really really embarrassed that I forgot the name because I was like so beyond that's what it's called. Mm, no, oh, no, it's not beyond, beyond. Two, beyond two souls. Beyond two souls. That's what it was. There, yes. there was um, posters and stuff for that there, and there was a panel on it, but I didn't see um, anything more than that. I saw a little bit of it on. I think it was. Um, I think it was a Spike TV coverage. Mm-hmm. Of, um, of Comic Con, and um, I'm I'm really interested in that game. Yeah, so. yeah. Heavy Rain was awesome, and that if it's anything like Heavy Rain, which I'm sure that you know it, it's going to go beyond that. Beyond. Uh, <laughs> literally. Um. Yeah. Their their controls and everything. I think we're really cutting edge and immersive, which you always want in a game. So there you go. Yeah. All right. Now here comes the big thing: the people and the panels. mm Hmm. Uh, how many of these did you actually see? Um, in person, one. Which one? one? The Joss Whedon panel. Okay, I was there. I watched most of them. Uh, why don't why don't we start from the top of your list? The Big Bang Theory one. Mm-hmm. So, um, Big Bang Theory was in Hall H, mm-hmm. I believe, and it was huge couldn't get in everything anything that was in hall h i couldn't get into mm-hmm. um and just about everybody was there except for um jim parsons right. jim parsons who was stuck in traffic no no oh, he no was. i'm sorry not him he, um, um this is actually um on broadway right now in new york so he was via satellite from new york no i was thinking of um uh, you know i was like for show number one i'm blanking on a lot of stuff from uh, Roseanne, what was his his name? His real oh, name? Oh, um, Go Lucky or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was stuck yeah. in traffic. That's why he didn't. Yeah, make it. yeah. He was supposed to be on, and he was um, in the book and everything, you know, on as uh, being there, but he wasn't actually there. Yeah. Um. So that was a good good panel, and they actually gave away uh, like a ride to space. That was amazing. At the end of the thing, then I think they surprised the entire cast. Uh, yeah. One of the the shuttle commanders from the space shuttle comes out and says, "Well, um, how would you like to have a ride in space?" And, and this was directed at Simon Hedberg, who plays yeah. um, Wallowitz. Oh, I was going to say, now it's my turn to blank on <laughs> um, Wallowitz. Who plays Wallowitz? Because at the the end of the last season, Wallowitz actually like goes into space, and that's like the cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then they had, yeah, this uh, commander come out and it's like, hey, so you played a character who went into space. How would you like to go into space for real? <laughs> and um, and he was just kind of like, oh, I don't know, uh, you know, I don't like freeze dried food. Uh, 
And so then the uh, writers were um, let it out to to the public. So they brought up everybody who had asked a question mm -hmm. on the floor, brought them all up out of the audience onto the stage, and then gave them all envelopes, which only one had the golden ticket in it. Um, and so somebody got to go into space. That was amazing. So, of course, they, they had a lot of kids asking questions, which didn't make any sense to me. I know. They kept saying, like, all the cast members kept saying, go find your mommy. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, we're the adults asking questions. But I guess everybody who was over 18 that asked a question was up. And so this one girl, I can't remember her name. It was it's like something like Destiny or something, some yeah, like, yeah. name like that. She won a trip to space. Now, the way that this works is that this this rocket plane um mm -hmm. it, it sort of yeah. takes off on its own it makes right. its way out into um into space but you can't leave your seat so you right. can't you really, really go onto a space station or anything you don't kind of i mean you're weightless but you're still strapped into this plane it yeah. just kind of gets into low orbit and then falls back down to earth yeah so you're you're in space but you're in like low space yeah. You're out of the atmosphere and everything like that. So I I don't know, maybe I guess that's maybe why he chickened out, but I would have been like, Yeah, give me the trip. I'll I think take most it. people would be like, like, Hello, it's still space. <laughs> like, <laughs> Even if it is or isn't, I mean it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Right. Yeah, and exactly. to give that up, I I just think that it's lame. I would have taken it in a heartbeat. But I guess Wallow it's chickened out. I know. I thought that was bizarre where he wasn't like every other cast member was like, what? You know, and he was the only one going, oh, you know, it's not, that's not that great. Give uh, it to someone else. <laughs> give it to Sheldon. Yeah. The, give it to the TV monitor. <laughs> All right. Now the Game of Thrones panel. This I, was um, disappointing. I, I think. stopped watching it. I was just like so bored with the whole I thing. I do. Yeah, last year's um, Game of Thrones panel was way, way better. They had um, the call, uh, Cal, um, the Dothraki there. Mm -hmm. uh, Khaleesi was there. And she was again there this year. But they had, like, they had, um, everybody was there. Um, Ned Stark was there. The crazy bitch queen was there. <laughs> um, Khaleesi. Like, How could you... Khaleesi Khaleesi, she should be like top of your list. I said Khaleesi. No, I, did you? Yes. I don't think you. Oh, okay, maybe I just didn't hear your uh, your, your internet is stuttering a little bit, so maybe that's why I, I didn't hear it. I you would think FiOS would be better than this. Um, but yeah, they had like all the major characters were there on the panel last year, and it was fantastic. This year they had like all the minor characters mm -hmm. except for Khaleesi, and they were like very boring it, i mean they weren't talkative they weren't out going they're like, yeah it's great and i think a big mistake was sadly um george r martin being the moderator yeah. on this panel you would think i mean you would hope that the creator of the series getting to ask questions of the actors playing his characters would be pretty awesome yeah but it totally was it was super boring, and he should have been on the panel answering questions and not asking them. Yeah, I agree. It was just a lot of pauses, a lot of, I don't know. I I scrubbed forward up until he asked Khaleesi some questions, and that was all I wanted to hear, and <laughs> that was it. Yeah, the, the, and they were just like, hey, so what's it like being on a TV show? Do you get stopped, you know, like in public? Well, her, I, I like the story she told about the elevator. But she gets out of an elevator and this woman just like whispered to her, Khaleesi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I probably would never, ever recognize her in public just because of the hair. It's, you know, her her natural hair is dark brown. Mm -hmm. And that's like 180 degrees difference from Khaleesi, the character. And so mm -hmm. in public, I, 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 don't, I probably wouldn't recognize her. Yeah. All right, so you saw the Joss Whedon one. Tell us about that. So after the Firefly reunion panel, like six hours later, he comes back and does just plain old Q&A, him alone. It's 
just him on the uh, stage. Mm -hmm. And it was, I mean, he, he announces kind of what he, his new thing is. He's doing this new movie that I guess they just wrapped up called um, Much Ado About Nothing. Um, kind of a short indie uh, black and white about um, the Shakespeare play. Mm -hmm. um, and and that was about it. Um, and so then the, it was pretty much all dedicated to, to people asking questions. And of course you get everybody going like, why don't you bring Firefly back? You know, no. why don't you make a Buffy movie? Why don't you make an Angel movie? You know, uh, like all these questions and you there were a couple of kids in this panel which asked those questions yeah. and it was like heartbreaking because yeah. one one little girl came up and and you could tell she was um she was slow and she asked the question like so you made like a lot of money off of avengers so I guess he doesn't have the rights to Firefly anymore, and that's kind of a big deal. Probably not. So, he might not so have the, had them to begin with. The girl asks, now that, you, pretty much, now that you've made all this money off Avengers, can't you just buy the rights back to Firefly? And if you do and make it again, can you set it before Serenity so Wash doesn't die? <laughs> and, and, like, literally the entire hall was just, like, in tears. It was so sad, and but Joss is totally awesome and funny the whole time. Um, he was uh, it was the end of his day, and he'd been talking all day long, and he was super tired. But at the at the same time, he was just really funny. And he went he did this one awesome awesome speech about um, the economy of all things. I forget the question somebody mm -hmm. asked pertaining to like. Um, his views on capitalism or something and it was bizarre but he gave like the best answer ever and it was like a 10 minute speech hmm. and it was awesome um and literally every after that everyone stood up and clapped like the end of the firefly reunion oh, panel it we'll was awesome i haven't watched the joss whedon one yet but it seems to me like what he wants to do is is you know, Firefly was his baby. He lost the rights to it. Can't really do what he wants to do with it anymore. And maybe wants to put it behind him? He, he, he said that. I mean, and like I said, a lot of people brought up past stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, say like, look, they all have a lot of fans. Why don't you revisit these projects? And his answer was always the same. Because when I finish a story, it's finished. Those are all done. I'm moving on. Does he consider Serenity the end? I, I get because when I was when we were watching the Firefly reunion panel, he said there are some unresolved things. Yeah, uh, but I think anything that he feels is unresolved probably is not going to be revisited in a show or movie. Oh, okay. The only like media um, those will live on in are the books, the, books the comic and books, comics, yeah. Um, just like how Buffy and Angel, you know, have, have kind of continued on in comic form. I think that's really the only thing you can do there. Mm -hmm. I don't, I sincerely doubt him going back in, uh, you know, TV or movie media for any of his past shows. Okay. You know, he pretty much feels like, okay, those are done, but these guys can, you know, these writers I trust over here can continue on in the yeah. comics. Great. I'm going to go make new stories over Avengers, here. Yeah. It's like when I was growing up, my big thing that never got resolved, other than Star Trek, but, but Star Trek had a motion picture, so that sort of continued on. There was a show that was on uh, called Space 1999, and in TV years ago, long uh not like it is today or maybe maybe from like the 90s on is that when you had an episodic tv show you did not know at the end of the season whether or not you're going to be picked up the following season so yeah. the show just ended and, it, and and just like in in regular form back then there was no resolution because you had no idea if you're going to come back and even if you did you wouldn't resolve it anyway because that's not what television did and it yeah. left um it, it, it sort of like left people for years in this sort of state of what happens. And mm -hmm. so a bunch of fans actually got together 
wrote and built the set and got one of the actresses from the show to do this sort of like goodbye speech or something like like she's sending off a message wow. to earth and saying this is what happened this is this is where we're going and that was the fan ending and it was so impressive that they actually put it on the box set that came out recently wow. and so that was the resolution that people want because that's what that's what people want is when tv shows end unexpectedly and this is the big thing that, that people didn't like about the Mass Effect 3 ending. They want a resolution. They want some sort of solid ending so that they don't yeah. feel like, what just happened? <laughs> what was what, this? Uh, what did I waste my time? What did I waste my money? This was an amazing, yeah. whatever the story is. I'm not just, just saying Mass Effect specifically. But whatever the story is, it has to end or else you will get rabid people. And uh, that's what happened yeah. with Firefly, obviously. Um what I always wanted to ask Joss, I mean, there are a thousand things I can ask Joss Whedon, but I always wanted to ask him, did you ever get an apology from anybody at Fox saying, we screwed up? I would doubt it. Because <laughs> that's what I would like to, because look at what happened with the X-Files. X-Files was running on Fox. It it started to flop towards the end. Mm-hmm. I And Fox could say whatever they want, but I can't see how they didn't just push it for an, it's at least one other season. Yeah. Um I bet they, well, A, they'd have to know, you know, about the whole fan kind of Mm -hmm. surgence behind it. And I would imagine most of those um, suits at Fox probably don't or don't care. Yeah. Um, So, whatever. Right. Yeah. So, moving on to the Firefly reunion panel. Yes. uh, This panel was before uh, the draft. Sweden one, which was like just before I could get into this hall, so I wasn't physically there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but I watched it afterwards, like you did on YouTube. Amazing, amazing, like, just so sad and heartfelt. And everyone there was so good and had so much actors and the characters and the world and the series and everything. I mean, obviously, they had camped out. All these people that were in that hall had camped out the entire night before. And Joss actually went about three in the morning yeah. on the street and like met with a bunch of people that were camping out and waiting in line. And um, and so there were a couple of allusions to that in the panel. But um, uh, his just and at the end, it was oh, I was. The end like, question, somebody had asked him, uh, what do the fans mean to you? And he couldn't answer the question because he got just so emotional about it. Yeah, and then everyone started standing up, and even the actors on the panel stood up, you know, and were applauding Joss because he, he's just literally speechless, and you can see that he's kind of tearing up. I don't know if he actually was, but it just that you could, he didn't need to say anything. Mm-hmm. You could feel it. There was more fan support for Firefly from one season than there were for Buffy for, was it, seven or eight seasons? I watched Buffy on and off. It was a good show. I liked it. I liked I what they did with it. Buffy and Angel both had more support later, like after it had gone and, um, you know, people start to watch it and, and it kind of perforates, you know, culture. Firefly had... Uh, surgeons and a, a fan base from day one mm-hmm. um, and even more so from the day it was taken off the air like mm-hmm. right after it was taken off the air yeah. uh, whereas Buffy I think you know years later then it kind of was more popular yeah so it's a shame I, I still hope that maybe some perfect storm would happen and maybe we can get even just like half a season of Firefly or something, but it probably will never happen in this business. Everybody has gone their own way and bringing all the people back after so many years is probably just never going to happen. Yeah. Um, They brought most of them back for the reunion, but they still didn't have everybody. It seemed like most of the, um, the chicks weren't there. No, uh, (laughs) Um, Summer Glau was there, of course, but Summer, um, yeah, she was there, but she only said like three words the entire time. Um, uh, what is it? I followed Jewel State on Twitter. She said that she had booked a vacation; she couldn't make it. Um, I don't remember what happened with everybody else. I think um, Anara uh, wasn't there. I think she was filming something. Yeah, I can't remember her real name, Anara. 
Um, so, you know, they're all busy. Um, well, good for them. You know, it would be worse if they weren't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, I think the best picture I had seen out of Comic-Con was um, 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 Nathan Fillion with Matt Smith. Did you see that one? No. Oh, yeah, my God. It was the two of them at... at some party or something and the two of them are just like like animated talking to each other and that was like the win of of all of comic-con it's just that picture of nathan fillion and matt smith talking together and then oh, that's fantastic and then I there was a the video book. of of matt smith and and the the two companions from uh doctor who the season seven and they're running around not running around they're, they're being um 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 rotor, ridden shuttle around, shuttle no ridden around they're being a ridden. Cat. no <laughs> They're being ridden around on a pedicab around San Diego, singing Bohemian Rhapsody. It was hilarious. I think That's I posted like thing uh, most of the time in San Diego, but especially during the con, their pedicabs are out in force. Yeah, yeah, and people are just going up to Matt, going, "Hey, how you doing?" Just yeah, see, that's another one. Like, as much as I love Matt Smith, and he's totally my favorite and the sexiest doctor ever, I don't think if I saw him down going down the street in a pedicab that i would recognize oh him. i would you know I he's would. got I his didn't... aviators on and i just don't think like, <laughs> like oh i mean i don't think i would I, sad to say it's, i've been a doctor who fan since the tom baker days although i did take sort of a little break not when the show was off the air but after i went to college i stopped watching it because i couldn't get it where i went to school mm. i couldn't mm -hmm. get it on television um, and back then, like, I don't think we had, I don't know if we had a VCR, I don't remember, but, um, when it came back, I was just like all over it. So, um, yeah, I mean, if, if Matt, if I saw Matt Smith, I would have just like probably chased after him or something like that. <laughs> you just start running after the pedicab. Well, no, I mean, when you watch a show like that for so many decades and you see somebody that, that, is, you know, plays the main part. You would at least want to say hello or, or something like that. Not be a stalker yeah. or someone stupid or something like that. But you know, you, no. you just want to. I don't think anybody wants to be a stalker. No, I don't no, no. That's something they set out to do. But. Yeah. And then finally rounding out the panels. Um, I mean, there were obviously way more panels than I'm listing here. These are kind of like my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, the Geek and Sundry panel with Felicia Day and Will Wheaton. Yeah. I didn't watch that yet. I didn't either. I still need to watch it. Um, I was all set out to get up early, the crack it on, and get over there because it was on the main halls. There was they were in like the indigo room at the Hilton across the street, and it was kind of bizarre. And I'm like, this isn't gonna be full. I'll get into this one. Like, probably not that many people even know what Geek and Sundry is. You know, I I got this. I get up at five in the morning and I check Twitter. And there are already people, again, camped out in line for Geek and Sundry. Yeah. I'm like, damn it. I cannot, like, I cannot win. It's funny because when I went to, uh, went to BlizzCon years ago, I interviewed Felicia Day. And there, were, there was a line of people there for, um, for autographs for the Guild, Season 1 DVD. And there were a good, like, a good number of people, but not like the long lines because Season 1 had just ended. And it was on DVD, and it had a following, obviously, but not the huge following that it has today. And yeah. and you know, with Will Wheaton there and everything, it was just um, it was just a a lot of fun. Um, I, I, I people have said that it was great. I haven't watched it yet, but I want to. With maybe you and I should probably watch it later and see we how it is. We should do an after show, and um, we can watch that. We could if I go get something to eat first. <laughs> but no, like, why do you need to eat? I need like, to eat, what man. What is this? It's like dinner time over here. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, um, I wish I went to that panel. That would have been fun. Mm -hmm. Um, I love both of them. I watch tabletop religiously on YouTube. It's mm -hmm. kind of funny. Um, I never played any tabletop games and I probably never will and I have no interest, but for some reason watching other people play it is, um, is fascinating to me. You know, I used to be huge into tabletop games in college. Um, my roommate and I, we used to 
find games and play them and everything and we'd have a group of people that, that what you're doing on camera is very <laughs> cute i used to do that too where did i see that from the first time? i can't remember it was in a movie um but um I mean, now with all my friends from college and high school scattered all over the place, that's actually how I got into MMOs in the first place. Is it high school? It, well, no, um, I got in touch with uh, a friend of mine in high school that used to run the D and D group that I was in, and then I would say, "Oh, so what's Ed doing? And what's Eric doing? And what you know? What's all? What are all these people doing?" And, and all of them said, "We're playing EverQuest, and we're on this server." Oh, okay. And that's how I got into playing EverQuest because it was our way of playing Dungeons and Dragons without having to be, you know, or without having to come forty, fifty, hundred thousand miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm actually playing Dungeons and Dragons online right now. Mm -hmm. That's, I guess, it's close. <laughs> I haven't played it yet. I know we we talked about this on Quest Log, which which this show is now replacing. But uh, oh yeah, so if you're a huge Quest Log fan, guys, guess what? <laughs> um, we're pretty much rolling that into this into show. Into this since, show, but since again, like I said, you know, I don't have a whole lot of time, um, and the show covers everything. Mm -hmm. Now that it's covering everything, we'll be talking about gaming, and you'll be doing your little stint about DDO. And I could talk about how uh, my Rift uh, subscription just got canceled because I just because you let play it. it anymore. I let it. I let it go. Um, I think I may do the same thing with Terra. Yeah, I know. Me too. I think um, I'm probably going to do that. And um, next month, I'm really not going to have time for it. So um, no, because uh, I need to play uh, Guild Wars two like all the time. So I got my Guild Wars shirt on. Well, that's the first one. That doesn't count. Yeah, it, well, it does count. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, that I think pretty much. Oh, so I mean, I mentioned the lines and everything about yeah. Comic Con. Another thing that <laughs> I I just I have to mention. Here we go. Um, <laughs> there should really be weight limits for costumes. I think. <laughs> Not for costs playing. Yeah. Um, but for when well, for you costumes. buy a costume, like I don't know where they find a um, Superman costume in Triple XL, but that shouldn't be a thing. Yeah, I I I saw some pictures uh, over the course of the weekend of these just in, insanely bizarre body types with costume combinations. And you know, it's weird. It's it was primarily is far more on the female side than the male side this year. Mm -hmm. Generally, you have, okay, fat Spider-Man, fat Wolverine. Okay, I get it. You dudes are fat, and, and you're not going <laughs> to go to the gym before you decide to um, masquerade around. Um, but generally, girls don't. Um, either A, they don't dress up, or B, they only have the balls to dress up if they have the body to back it up. Yeah. This year was not that. Oh. It was like way more of the women who dressed up in costume. It tended to be more the women who shouldn't. Oh, no. And the women who should were just wearing normal clothes. Really? Yeah. Because I saw the opposite in New York. In New York, um, a lot of the women that... Um, had the body type or wearing the costumes. It it used to be that way. I'm just saying like this year and, and maybe it's taking a turn for the worse. Uh, uh, this year I, I noticed the opposite happening. Even I'm starting to go back to the gym eventually because, you know, comic cons in October and I'm not dressing up or anything, but, or maybe I'm not. Am I, what are we doing? Um, I don't know what you're doing. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> I'm going to I don't know I think I'm going to either dress up as Rogue if I can get more stuff for that together mm -hmm. or I don't know something maybe I'll wear my Star Trek uniform there you go maybe. you do that but um, I I guess we're, we're not telling people that they can't no, express no, 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 no. themselves but but maybe pick a um a costume with more coverage <laughs> if um i don't know you have more to cover yeah something like that 
All right, let's move on to Geek of the Week. What what are we doing with this? We're picking our favorites. So Geek of the Week is a nomination for the best whatever. Best person, best geek, best gamer, best whatever person in the geek world. Mm -hmm. And so we were going to just use this section as kind of a area to highlight somebody who was, I don't know, being exceptionally weird and geeky that we just kind of wanted to bring up as like a point of interest. But then I got a better idea that we would each nominate a person mm -hmm. and then roll to see who wins. And we have the dice. If, if anybody saw my picture on Instagram, I pulled out my old D&D &D set and I've got my dice in there. I, this was my, my D20, which I'm showing on camera right now. I just, just instinctively picked it out, rolled it, rolled a 20. Because you win. No, it's because the show is awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I tried to. I actually, my first thought was, I'm going to find an iPhone app that's a 20-sided <laughs> die, and I'll use an app, right? There has to be an app for that. And so all I could find were regular six-sided die, which is not nearly I'm as surprised. fun. Like, I don't want to. I could just pull out a Yahtzee set and get one of those. I don't want one of those. Yeah. So we have this. <laughs> now, what are we doing with this D20 right now? How, how is this working? Okay. So I have nominated somebody. You've nominated somebody. Mm -hmm. And then, well, much like a um, roll for a chest, we will roll for Geek of the Week. <laughs> um. So, but since you have the die, you'll have to roll once for each of them. I'll put and it on camera. No, I'll put the camera on it. So, oh, so am I rolling it right now? Okay. So, wait, well, we, who have we nominated? Oh, who have we nominated? Um, Go ahead. Say what your My nomination is. My nomination is Joss Whedon for everything he did at the con. Everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he is my week. Okay. Minus Kevin Smith, only because Jersey represent and he is... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I have. I have. Easy, Mike. <laughs> I met. I met Kevin um, once. Uh, it was years ago. He was doing this thing in Red Bank where uh, he was showing movie trailers. And it was a lot of fun, and he did a little Q and A afterwards. And I got him to sign my clerk's laser disc. Laser disc. Laser disc. I actually have it. It's inside. I it's framed. <laughs> and um, I, I got him and, and a couple of other people, Jason, uh, to, to sign it. Uh, Brian O'Halloran signed it. Oh, nice. Yeah. And uh, but but the funny thing is that I, I hand him the laser disc, and he goes, he was like surprised because being at the time that the best thing that you can buy for video mm -hmm. was laser discs, um, he was very impressed with the fact that you know I didn't hand him a friggin' VHS tape. VHS. So yeah. <laughs> he signs on the thing. To Mike, this is one cheap disc, <laughs> Kevin Smith. <laughs> but then the other thing I have from him is I have I have a poster of Chasing Amy, and what he did was he was he was personalizing the autographs and said so. It's um it's uh, what what was what was her name um uh, Amy in the movie and Chasing Amy yeah what was um her real name her real name Mary Jo no 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 well anyway it's a big giant picture of her face okay. and so on the on the thing he writes to Mike. I had her, really, and an arrow pointing to her head. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah they dated during that came, time. They came, Yeah, they dated for a while. So so uh, Kevin Smith is the guy from Jersey that um, everybody from Jersey wanted to be. So, yeah, he's awesome. Yeah. Um, I've seen him a few times, and he um, well, he lives out here now, so in your face. Um, uh, and but, I see him a few times in L.A., like when he does the uh, podcast at the John Lovett's comedy club uh -huh. at universal studios i've seen him a few times and met him and jason muse when you come down here where are we going new york no well yes but where where did where did i say i was going to take you the cube no well, well yes that's that's happening speaking so. of kevin smith oh the stash the stash you and i are going to go to the stash yeah all right so here we go this is the Deaton here. I'll bring the camera right. down. So. so this is for Joss. What? How are we doing this? So you roll once for each one. Oh. And then oh, whoever, so the first one's for Joss. I, I don't. Have you ever rolled dice before? I mean. Yes, Jesus. I have. I just didn't know if it was like was it one to ten or okay. Ready? No, big twenty. So here we go. What is this? This is a thirteen for Joss Whedon. 
And oh, he rolls a 13. Okay, right. for Kevin Smith, 18. Ah! Oh, ah! Kevin Smith so, wins. Kevin Smith rolls an 18. Josh can't save against it. And <laughs> Kevin Smith wins for Geek of the Week. And what happens if I roll a 20? Does he become Geek of the Week two weeks in a row? Is that like oh, the crit? Maybe, yeah. Like blackjack just wins <laughs> you don't even roll again just done or maybe you have to like go to uh bust out another d20 and and roll again <laughs> all right i think that's it because we're already we're already over an hour there was a lot to talk about with uh well, yeah comic-con mm -hmm. um but our next show is obviously going to be much more structured than this one <laughs> what is all kinds of structure what are you talking about <laughs> i'm not even gonna say it <laughs> all right so um yes this was our inaugural episode thanks to anybody who has been watching you can find us on google plus as the nexicon mm -hmm. we have facebook the nexicon uh we're the, at the nexicon on twitter i am at, at casey case this guy over here is at star mike all right thanks for listening watching we'll talk to you later bye